Hey guys, cover time of cover. I haven't done one of these in a while, and well, got my I have a very happy pug at my feet now because she sneaked into the house. <laughs> happy election day to everyone who's voted. Um, do your civic duty, go out and vote. Okay. Uh, This coffee time with Cobra interrupted by Pug with a cough. <laughs> <laughs> that is the happiest Pug I've ever seen. Look at this. Just seriously. Look, 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 look. That is the happiest Pug I've ever seen. Look. Oh, heaven. She's in heaven now. <laughs> anyway, guys. How you all been? How you doing? I'm good. I'm having a cup of coffee. Mm. I haven't done a coffee time with Cobra since I moved here. This is the very first Coffee Time with Cobra I've done in North Carolina. Second. Oh, that's right. Second. Yeah. First, first video I didn't like, so I deleted it. But uh, technically this is going to be my first because I'm uploading this one. Um, I know, and you guys are like, what the hell happened to the face? It's like, yeah, it's like a rainforest. It just grew all of them. Uh, it's what happens when you don't shave. Um, most people don't believe me when I used to say to them, if I don't shave damn near every day, I end up with a uh, Carolina rainforest on my face. And I can say that with pride because I quite literally live inside a rainforest. <laughs> quite literally. This, this house is a wonderful house. It's on a half acre of property. Um, and it's not mine, if anyone asks. No, 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 no. I wish this house was mine. It's that gorgeous. It's a beautiful house. Uh, it belongs to uh, Comfy's mum and dad. They've earned this um, for a lifetime of hard work. And so we're just staying here until we can get on our feet with an, an apartment and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's crazy guys, absolutely crazy. Um, why hasn't there been any content from me? Um, well, first things first, my daughter, back in England her mother has had some health issues and I've been trying to help her through those um, she had a heart attack um, and then she had to have a, an operation to bypass that and then they found a clot um, after the surgery and so she stayed in to have the clot removed no, knock on wood you know knock on wood she's safe for now uh, then family people that I consider family uh, back in Utah they're having some issues and I've been helping them out there um, my friend's store uh, Justin D20 um, he sadly he's closed it for now um, and it's going to be reopening in uh, March um, in a new venue and everything else thank you Buka, love you too uh, he's going to be reopening it in March uh, simply because of the venue that we were at, we were limited by a max of like 30 people total, which wasn't enough to get WPN status, thank you Wizards. Um, so we're moving to a bigger venue, uh, with you know cheaper rent, bigger venue kind of thing, you know. And I wish him all the best. Wish you all the best, Justin. Um, let's see, my computers are still not fixed. We're still waiting to hear back from the moving company's insurance company. Um, which doesn't make sense because we pay for the extra insurance so it should have already paid out by now um, but apparently we have to wait 120 days which puts us into December so fingers crossed fingers crossed into December we will have the ability to stream again to get my computers fixed up and running and working again and a whole bunch of other things fingers bloody crossed um, so there will be that wind chime so there will be that hopefully fingers crossed um, I'm trying to stream but I'm using the girlfriend's laptop and it's a, it's it's a good laptop you know um, but it's just not designed to, to do the things that my other two dedicated rigs are designed to do so I can only really do things like AMAs and the all coffee time with Cobras kind of kind of streams and I know that's not what you guys want to see you guys want to see me play World of Tanks War Thunder um, armored warfare, um, things like that. You guys want to see me uh, um, 
Hell, some of you guys even want, want to see me fail at playing Escape from Tarkov. You know, um, you guys want to learn what egress and, and in, or what uh, ingress and egress is. Um, ingress being entry point, uh, egress being exit point um, of a room. The anatomy, the, the anatomy of how to clear a room, military wise. How the British do it. How the Americans do it. Um, things like that, um, which is interesting. Um, really is. Um, I was before I moved out of Utah. I was gonna have a couple of my U.S. Army friends. I got a guy, a friend who was uh, now in the, the National Guard. Before that, he was in the Army Rangers. Um, another friend who was in the U.S. Army. Um, another friend who was Air Force. Uh, myself and whatnot. We were gonna go to the range and, and explain how we, uh, how each individual country's forces. Clear, clear a room, you know, do's and don'ts, what we could do to improve it so that uh, uh, infantry come home kind of thing. Um, also been looking at um, buildings that where I can turn it into my makeshift body shop so I can start churning out some cars, uh, some quick flip projects, things like that. Get some more YouTube content up on the automotive channel for you guys. Um, Cali. The uh, 08 Dodge Calibre that belongs to uh, Christina needs new injectors and uh, new spark plugs. It's part of the basic maintenance package for the motor because it's almost 100,000 miles. And you're supposed to change it at 100,000 miles. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do uh, here in a couple of a couple of weeks is uh, get some content. I've also got to replace the gas struts on the trunk or the boot, as we call it in England. Um, I fixed the rear spoiler. That was an absolute bollocking of all bollockings. Um, basically, Dodge in their infinite stupidity decided to hot snot, or, or, or that's the only thing I can consider. If you don't know what hot snot is, it's a glue gun. Basically, you buy a cheap glue gun from Michael's, Joanne's, wherever, and you basically take a glue stick, put it in a glue gun, and screw up the glue out, and then push two things together and hope they stick, pretty much. Um, that's pretty much what Chrysler did um, to the 04 to 012 um, Dodges. Char so the Chargers, the Chrysler 300s, etc., etc. Their rear spoilers are not bolted on, but the bolt holes are there. Um, I, I, when I find the footage, it's on this camera, it's on another camera, I think it's on my GoPro. Um, when I find the footage, I'll show it to you. Um, Dodge drilled the bolt holes in the actual uh, 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 trunk door itself, but not the spoiler. The spoiler is what snot got hot snotted on to those bolts that are bolted through into the trunk. It makes no sense. You're not adding any extra weight. You're not adding any extra steps or processes. It if all you need to do is just drill the hole through the spoiler and then bolt it with a washer and, 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 and whatnot to the trunk. You know what I mean? And the bolts are on the inside of the spoiler so you don't have to worry about water and rain and snow and whatnot getting in the trunk. It just, it just makes no friggin' sense. So I grabbed my Dremel, because I couldn't get an actual drill um, in there. Uh, unbolted the spoiler completely off the car, took the internal guts, <clears throat> excuse me, the internal guts of the spoiler out. Grabbed my Dremel with a drill bit and drilled through it, drilled through the plastic, took a ream in bit and just reamed right through to the bolt size, pushed the bolt through with a washer, bang, nut, tightened it down, done. Now that rear spoiler will not come off, period. And when I was working on it, I noticed that the bolt holes are there. They're just covered up with plastic. So all you gotta do is just quite literally, it's a soft plastic. You just gotta go zip, with literally, small, slowest speed you can on a Dremel or a drill, if you've got a, a drill with a small enough head, um, and just zip right through, you're done. And then you just ream the hole out to the width of the bolt, push the bolt in through because there's enough room to put the bolt up and in. So there's no root, there's there's no reason why 
that the Chrysler did not put a bolt through it. Just, no, let's just glue it to the bolt. You're gluing plastic to metal. That doesn't work, morons. So, yeah, I fixed the trunk issue. I'm just going to get the new gas struts because the old gas struts uh, leaked like crazy. Again, it, the, the car's 10 years old, you know. So it's going to happen. So we're going to take the gas struts out, uh, the old gas struts, put new gas struts in. Uh, I might get some beefier gas struts, actually. Um, put some new gas struts in the rear, new spark plugs, new injectors, and Callie is good as new. She just <laughs> carries on going. She's She drove from here in Matthews, North Carolina, all the way to Emory County, Utah, and back again. And yes, she does have a shift point issue. Um, that's in the transmission. There's nothing I can do about that because the transmission is an all-in-one sealed unit. It's going to have to go to Chrysler. Um, and the vehicle does have a lifetime drivetrain warranty uh, thing on it um, because it's under 100,000 miles. What I would like to do is contact Chrysler and have them come um, and make an appointment for us to go and drop Cali off so that uh, they can do the work on it and it's still under the warranty etc etc um, but if not I can get the, the injectors and the and, and the, the spark plugs it's really not that hard I've got a new click type torque wrench that I got um, as a moving present so I can grab that and just you know, it's not a problem um, you don't really need a torque wrench to put spark plugs in you just need to hand tighten them not, not uh, fucking wrench them in and mile up the block you don't want to do that do not do that spark plugs do not need to be freaking like 77 foot pounds of pressure no 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 it, at best 10 15 foot pounds of pressure just that's it go one full turn back it up a bit half turn you're good that's it trust me spark plugs do not need that much uh, got to gap the spark plugs correctly though too, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah, she she's she's good. I mean, she she does have an issue with one of the one of the injectors is either blocked, or the other, one of the other injectors is always open, um, and that's mostly harsh booker, and that's mostly when the car is uh, on surge when when she steps on the gas and she, it'll go, do, 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 you know it it. it it stutters at first because the ECU is trying to tell what injectors over score and then make the others to compensate and uh, so I'm pretty sure once we fixed the injectors and the spark plugs the transmission will start shifting a lot smoother and if it doesn't um, if it doesn't then I'm gonna have to uh, take it to Chrysler and have them take a look at the transmission because again it's a sealed all-in-one unit and nothing I can do I mean if it was a gear star transmission if it was a you know if it was a turbo 400 turbo 350 um, c56 um, c77 you know a, a transmission that that's designed to be serviced I can do it myself I'm a transmission I'm not a transmission specialist but I have rebuilt a few transmissions in the past um, most notably the transmission in my race car um, which was the turbo 400 um, in my uh, 77 banana Camaro um, I've told stories about that car um, it was a 77 banana Camaro for dirt circle track uh, big block 400 turbo 400 combo um, and pretty much I just got her into second third gear and just held it and just held my line and just went around in a circle and just winning you know, it really wasn't that hard find your lane stick to your lane find your gear stick to your gear winning it's that easy uh, most people say, oh, look, another left turn, you know, yeah, 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 but the point is, you know, it was easy, um, and, oh, tire pressure as well, if you can get your tire pressures right, you really don't even have to touch your steering wheel, the car just literally steers itself, once you find your lane, um, but Cali, the transmission in Cali is a all-in-one sealed unit, I cannot, um, touch anything in that transmission, um, the only ones who can is Chrysler Corporation, so we may have to contact Chrysler and have them come out and take Hallie off to the shop for a couple of days and get get us a rental 
and uh, whatnot. But yeah, that's pretty much what's going on with Cali. Um, I do have my dibs on the 66 Mustang. Um, needs a lot of work, all original. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if it's a four lug or a five lug because it's got the original hubcaps on it yet. Uh, I haven't looked at the motor or the transmission, so I don't know if it cranks over or anything, but the body is straight. And I mean straight as a freaking arrow. Um, so for a body guy, to me, I was like, oh. But really, I was like, unibody, so yay. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know what unibody is, unibody is where there is no frame under the car. Most cars are either body on frame, which is the, the, the body of the car, sits on a frame, drives along that way, or it's unibody, which means there's only a half frame, which is the firewall forward. Everything from the firewall backwards is all one body, which means if you cut the top off of it, you're damaging the actual structural uh, um, Structural engineering of the vehicle, etc., 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 etc. Most car, most modern cars, and um, I think the last body-on-frame car that Ford made was the f was the um, Grand Marquis Ford 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 uh, Crown Vic was the last body-on-frame car Ford's made. Uh, I think at least I think it is. Um, I mean, their trucks are body-on-frame because um, they have to be their trucks. Um, but cars are mostly unibody design now. Um, Trusonic welded, which basically means it's just robot arm goes zap and welds it in five points at the same time, basically five, six points at the same time. Um, which means body guys like me are a dying breed um, because most cars, if they're unibody and they take X percent of uh, structural damage, the insurance company will just write the car off. Doesn't mean the car can't be fixed and driven and, and, and whatnot, because they can. They can. It just means that, that insurance-wise, you're only going to get a salvage title, which means its resale value is in the fucking chitter. Um, so unless you've got a really big fan of that car or that, you know, whatever. You know, uh, vans. Vans are body on frame. Um, minivans are not. Um, but vans like the, the Equine series, the GMC series, um, the A-Team van basically, um, which was a GMC. It originally started off as a Chevy, or it ended up as a Chevy, it, but it started off as a Dodge. Um, but yeah, that, that, those sort of things, are, that's the difference between unibody and body on frame. Well, well Mustangs are unibody, and if you've got a Mustang that's got a dent in, the uni, in any part of the unibody, you're fucked. Pretty much so the door jams, A pillar, B pillar um, area, you're fucked. Um, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of work, to get that to, for the doors to sit right, to open right, for the jams, um, for the for body panels fit and finish the works. It's going to be a lot of work. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, apparently it's a straight six. C6 automatic, um, pony interior, a factory AC, you know, all original. Um, guy only wants you know, X amount for it. I'm thinking about buying it and flipping it, or buying it, fixing it up, driving it around for a bit, then, then you know, selling it on kind of thing. Um, but I do have my eyes on a 56 Ford, two-door Ford Victoria, uh, which is my, oh, it's my dream car. Um, if I could get my hands on that and a 49 Merc, I would die a happy man. Oh, that and that and a um, 57 Plymouth Fury, but you know, or Plymouth Belvedere. So, but I ain't never gonna get those. That's Christine, if you don't know who it is. Um, Christine was a 57 Belvedere slash Plymouth Fury. Um, the Belvedere and the Fury are the same car. The only difference is, is a trim package, trim package, and a few other minor details. But other than that, they are identical body wise, panel wise, you name it. So if you can find yourself a 57 Belvedere or a 57 Plymouth Fury, you're in the money. You're in the money. Those are the go-to uh, want to find cars, along with Gen 1 Camaros. Uh, for some reason, Gen 1 Camaros are, are making a steady climb back. Uh, in uh, that, um, so is Malibu, so is Chevelle. Che Chevelles are always in demand. Uh, Chargers, not so much. They've weaned down a little bit since the whole Fast and the Furious crap. Um, so, uh, also pickups. Uh, if you've got a 40s GMC Jimmy or a 40s Ford, like an F1, um, or a um, 
dodge one ton uh, from you know 40s and 50s era you know those pickups so yeah uh, 46 Ford, so basically 40s Fords Chevys are going up in value pickups um, 50s Dodge for some reason those boxy Dodges I don't like I'm not a fan of those they're going up um, in value um, I know people are going nuts for the 70s box style um, Silverados Chevy Silverado pickup trucks not a big fan of those I mean they look cool they can be dressed up nice um, just not a fan of the box style. I mean, I'm not a fan of the new 2018-2019 uh, uh, Ford F-150s. Um, they're just too boxy. It's like, have you forgotten what aero fucking dynamics are? You know? It's like, hello? I mean, no, you give me a 77 higher boy. Mm. I'll love you forever. Um, yeah, I stopped liking Ford pickups. Uh, late 70s, like, like 79, 80 and up, because that's when they changed to a real boxy style they tried to go back to like a curved style in the 90s from 96 to like 2000 um that's when the lightning the svt lightning and stuff came out so yeah there was that but um if i had a choice between a 57 plymouth fury 57 ford victoria or a 49 merc Merc's got better resale value. Fury is just the fury. I mean, you, you do her upright, you could take her to car shows, you'll be winning awards like crazy. Um, also, you know, uh, people would rent the car for Halloween, stuff like that. I think you have to worry about renter's insurance and a whole bunch of other stupid shit. Um, so as much as I would love to own a 57 Plymouth Fury to drive, etc, etc, you know, and, and whatnot, I would have to pass on the Fury and go with the Victoria, because the Victoria is a car I would drive daily. I would literally make it my daily driver. I would throw Crown Vic undercarriage in on, on that car, you know, the whole frame, motor, engine, the works, that way I could just go to a, sh a speed shop, get a part if something's gone bad on it, because it's just a, basically a, a, Vic, a, a Crown Vic, you know, just without the Crown Vic body. Um, and I'd get, you know, I'd have fuel injection, I'd have power steering, power brakes, um, you know, better traction control. Um, of course, I'd put a, a, a get rid of the crappy fucking 8.8 .8 rear end that's in the Victoria, in, in the Crown Vic, and throw a Ford 9 inch in there um, from an expedition. Uh, because those things are just beefy. Oh, God. I purposely tried to break a, a Ford 9-inch rear end from an expedition, and I physically couldn't do it. I physically just could not do it. I threw almost 2,000 horsepower through that thing stock. Stock. And it just kept handling it. There was some slight buckle on the pumpkin, but that was just from the torque. So we braced it up, and that, that car just went up and just kept going. And it was just fucking sick. Awesome. Real awesome, but sick. Shh. It's the UPS van. Don't be racist. And so, yeah, it's... It's insane. My coffee's almost done, guys, so this video is almost done. But, yeah, um... I, I, I have to admit, I've also been redesigning the 2018-2019 the Dodge Charger. Um, I've been doing it on paper and working a little bit out in, in 3D modeling. Um, I have found a 3D model of the car um, and unfortunately it's uh, the model's locked so I can't really modify the model but I can use it as a 3D reference for the live stream later today so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Um, but I want to turn it into a roadster um, or a, a hardtop convertible or a convertible. Um, I want to change it from a four door to a two door um, I want to throw in either the Hellcat motor or the Redline motor into it. Um, wider rubber. Um, not bigger rubber, just wider rubber. So you've got more, more meat in the rear to grip. Um, stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's all I really want to do to the car. Is completely radically design, redesign it. Oh, and move the door scallops forward uh, a little bit. 
because um, where they sit right now, they just look horrible. So I want to move the door scallops forward. Um, if you're a Dodge fan, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, I'm actually a Ford fan. <laughs> so me working on Dodge designs and, and, and this, my girlfriend's family is Chrysler. They've got a Dakota, they've got a Jeep, and they Jeep Cherokee, or no, it's cheap. Grand Commander, a cheap com a Jeep Commander, and Cali being the Dodge Caliber. Uh, I'm a Ford guy, so you know, I'm 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 am I'm learning be by being thrown in the deep end. Uh, Paul, a uh, family friend, he has got a beautiful, beautiful uh, black Chevelle. Uh, I'll be doing getting some video footage of that and interviewing Paul for the YouTube channel, so you guys can uh, you know get to meet Paul, get to meet his cars, he's got a beautiful Porsche collection as well, uh, that'll be fun, uh, so yeah, uh, till then guys, I will see you in, uh, on Twitch, later on today, so, uh, ciao.